Nation continues to remember the lives of two young journalists tragically killed last week in a shooting on live television. Photographer Adam Ward and reporter Allison Parker. Hey everyone, I'm Allison Parker. In Salem, Adam Ward, News 7 Sports. Vester Flanagan, W2C News. I saw movement and then gunfire, lots and lots of gunfire. Pay close attention to these journalists as they report important events of the day. Allison Parker, Adam Ward, and Vester Flanagan worked together at WDBJ from 2012 and were held up by the community for their professionalism and hard work. But in the early morning hours on August 26, 2015, one tragedy while filming a news story tied them forever. The nation watched a brutal crime unfold on air as the reporters fought for their lives. But who could have committed such a heinous act and why? Life before it happened. Allison Parker. Allison Bailey Parker's the golden child for her family. Born to Barbara and Andy Parker in August 1991, she's the light of their lives. Always cheerful and naughty as a child, Allison grew up to be a formidable force of grit and determination that reflected in her performance as a par excellence student at James Madison University. While she dreamt of being a doctor or a pharmacist, her competitive nature and a strong sense of delivering justice helped her realize her dream of becoming a journalist. But as a journalist, I get to cover those types of fields. Her efforts came to fruition in 2012 when she earned an internship at WCTI-TV as a news reporter. She worked as a reporter with WCTI-TV for two years and joined WDBJ as a reporter for their show, Morning. Allison reported everything from events to the weather at news channels. This was an hour ago and right now you can't even tell that they were out here. That snow is just coming down. Carol? All right, everyone be careful, please. Allison Parker, thank you so much. Allison Parker from WDBJ in Roanoke. While things were finally looking up professionally, love blossomed in her personal life. She met Chris Hurst, a colleague and news anchor at WDBJ. Among other things, both shared a passion of changing the world through journalism. They fell in love quickly and started living together. However, both decided to keep their relationship private until they felt comfortable sharing it with friends and family. Adam Ward. Allison often worked with Adam Ward, a videographer at WDBJ and an occasional sports reporter. Friends and colleagues called this sports enthusiast from Nevada a reporter with a heart of gold, always polite and cordial in conversations. Adam was what everyone's been saying. He loved life. He was truly kind to people. He smiled all the time. Adam and Allison met when she was an intern at the TV station in 2012. As colleagues and friends, they often attempted to bring a smile to their viewers' faces. Vester Lee Flanagan. Professionally known as Bryce Williams, Vester Lee Flanagan started his career as a news reporter at CBS affiliate WTOC-TV after a short stint as a model and an actor. While he liked being the center of attention before the camera, Flanagan didn't take things to his head and stayed grounded. His hard work left a solid impression on his colleagues. In the years that I knew him in the early 90s, he was like so many other young people who come through the newsroom, happy to be in the TV station, happy to have his foot in the door on his first job, eager to do a good job. But you know, the next time you're at the convenience store, don't be so quick to give away that spread change. As Flanagan grew as a reporter, several opportunities opened up and he landed a job with WDBJ as a multimedia journalist in April 2012. Despite giving it his all and excelling at work, Flanagan constantly felt targeted for his race. Experiences from his previous jobs had left deep scars in his mind, and he behaved cautiously around the staff at WDBJ. Esther Flanagan, WTOC News. By December 2012, Allison, Adam, and Flanagan are three diligent and responsible budding news reporters with WDBJ working together and helping the community. Present day, 2015, the incident. In the early morning of Wednesday, August 26, 2015, Allison and Adam are setting up at the location to interview Vicki Gardner, executive director of the local Chamber of Commerce near Smith Mountain Lake in Montana. Approximately 5.30 a.m., it's a cool summer morning and the station crew is set up for an interview to be aired live on WDBJ show. As Allison preps for her questions on tourism for Vicky, Adam works with the production team on location. 6.43 a.m. The show's on air. Allison's with Vicky and begins to interview her. Now I need to show us how the lake has grown over the years. Good morning, Allison. 
Good morning, Ken. It's grown in so many ways. Everything seems to be the usual, but no one notices an armed man lurking in the background. Suddenly, someone fires eight shots and people on set start screaming on live television. The connection is lost, leaving the news anchor at the studio, Kimberly McGroom, confused but alarmed. Okay, not sure what happened there. And I heard this pow, 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 and it did not register that it was gunshots. The cops quickly arrive at the crime scene, but the gunman had escaped, leaving behind the lifeless bodies of Allison and Adam and a critically injured Vicky. And I played dead. I just uh, did everything in my power to contain myself, just to lay there in hopes that it was over and that he would think that he had accomplished his mission. WDBJ's manager reports the tragic deaths of Allison and Adam. Very, very sad duty to report that Allison and Adam died this morning, shortly after 645 when the shots rang out. As the news of the tragic event aired on TV catches fire across the media and newsrooms. Two broadcast journalists in Virginia were shot dead today while live on TV this morning. A news reporter and her photographer were shot to death live on television this morning just a short while ago. A deadly shooting that happened in the middle of a television live shot. Police in Virginia are looking for a gunman. They say they shot at a TV news crew while they were live on the air. Police are searching for a person who say, they say shot at multiple people at the Bridgewater Plaza near Smith Mountain Lake, according to Franklin County Sheriff's Department spokesperson. The shooting occurred at 6.45 a.m. this morning. The families of the two reporters, the staff at WDBJ, and the close-knit community of Virginia are left to deal with the horror and shock of what they witnessed on live television. They had lost two bright and kind people in their community within seconds. The investigation. While everyone grappled with the loss, the cops had their work cut out for them. Despite being shot, Vicki had survived. She was rushed to the hospital and immediately put into a medically induced coma. As the doctors tried their best to save the sole survivor of this violent incident that had shattered the community, it was clear to the investigating team that the killer had a motive and it was personal. But why would someone want to kill news reporters? It was possible that Vicki was the target while Allison and Adam were just collateral damage. With multiple theories at this point, the cops treated every person within the inner circle of these three victims as probable suspects. While they painstakingly clear every suspect that produces a legible alibi, details on Allison and Chris's relationship are flashed across news screens when he tweets about her sudden death and how they were living together. Because who would say it to parents of a girlfriend after nine months that I loved them? Mm. And they told me that they loved me back and that I, I was a part of their family forever and that they were a part of my family forever. Jeffrey and Chris, you're a part of a remarkable community there. All media houses now rush for a scoop from Chris, who has suddenly found his place under the limelight in this high profile double homicide. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Allison? Her smile. I mean, it, it's intoxicating. And I never really thought in a million years I'd have a chance. And then at the holiday party, you know, we, we came together. Uh, but it was so much more than that. It was her sense of humor. She was goofy. She was a nerd. She was a calculus tutor, you know? So she had all of this beauty, but she had brains and she had a sense of humor then. But where was Chris all this time? And why'd they keep their relationship hidden? As investigators begin to wonder what might have transpired, they also rely on Vicky's husband to reveal any details she may have shared with him during her call from the ambulance. A 434 number came up on my phone. It's unusual, especially that time of day. So I answered the phone, and it was Vicky. She was in the ambulance riding to uh, the hospital, and she, and I have to tell you, those are some of the best words I've heard. She uh, said that she was alive. She didn't know why, and that um, that she loved me. As the cops confirm Allison and Adam as the primary targets to this heinous crime, the injuries found on the bodies place the killer right in front of Vicky. She may have seen him. Unfortunately, given her critical condition, it'd be a while before she'd wake up and help with the investigation. As the morning hours inch towards noon, it becomes critical for the cops to find the deranged killer before he leaves the country. They find a picture of a suspicious looking guy on Adam's camera, but it's too blurry and they're not able to ID him. With no ongoing leads, one post on Facebook changes the direction of the case entirely. Flanagan Williams puts up this post on his Facebook account. This post brings a new life to the investigation. 
With Flanagan present at the crime scene, he could be a key eyewitness to the incident and help ID the guy on Adam's camera. What's unclear is why he would post this on social media and not show up at a police station. How is it that he was present at the crime scene and no one found out? They had several questions for Flanagan and needed to find him quickly. By now, his Facebook posts have updates. He calls out Allison and Adam, accusing them of discrimination. Things take a turn for the worse when his video from the first post begins to go viral. It's a first-person perspective of the shooter. Flanagan had committed this unfathomable act of violence. He'd also faxed an 18-page letter to ABC News titled, Suicide Note for Friend and Family, explaining his decision to execute this double homicide plan. A 23-page manifesto and suicide note, citing the June Charleston, South Carolina church massacre as a motive. He writes, the church shooting was the tipping point. One part of the puzzle was now solved. Flanagan had taken the lives of his colleagues. What the investigators had to find out was his why. A quick background check into him revealed a shocking truth. Flanagan was fired from WDBJ in February 2013. While Flanagan had often raised questions about being subjected to discrimination at workplaces, the case was quite the opposite. Before he joined WDBJ, he'd been called out for his intimidating, violent, and aggressive nature by his colleagues and employers on several occasions. Reports on his scuffle with the female staff at WTWC came to light, and the staff members at WDBJ had witnessed similar patterns in his behavior. He used the term on air, um, opening arguments, and I said, it's opening statements, not opening arguments. He came over and he started pretty quickly yelling at me. Um, and when I say yelling, screaming, um, you're not my news director, you're not my general manager, and on and on and on. And I was a little intimidated and nervous. Through our attorneys and through his attorney, we had to tell him that being gay was not a protected class, and he had no grounds to sue over that. So then he quickly changed it to racial discrimination. We thought he had come in with an agenda to find things that he could uh, beat us up with. He threw a newspaper article on my desk and I looked at it and it was a newspaper article from Tallahassee that indicated that he had sued his previous or one of his previous employers. It was not an idle threat. Williams filed another discrimination lawsuit, this time against his new bosses but not before he was fired in early 2013 and escorted from the station by police. He slammed his fist down on the table and threw a wooden cross at me and said, you're going to need these. Jeff Marks is the general manager. Did you know that he had trouble at his previous station? He filled out the application as Vester Flanagan, but the people who were hiring him were looking at his resume, looking at his history as Bryce Williams. So as Bryce Williams, he had a relatively clean history. Cops identify Flanagan's car while he's on the run, and a long chase ensues. He drives over 200 miles before the cops catch up with him on I-66. Despite several warnings from the cops, he doesn't budge, until he finally careens to the side of the road and takes his own life. 